Welcome to the video tutorial for adding and editing calculation zones in Visual 2012. Calculation zones allow you to collect information about the performance of your lighting design. A calculation zone consists of a group of point locations at which a virtual lighting measurement is made. Calculation zones can be added to your design from the Home tab of the ribbon bar by selecting the Zone command from the Calculations panel. If you left-click the Calculation Zone label or arrow, you can select all available Calculation Zone commands, including Rectangular, Polygonal, Surface, and Line. Start by selecting Rectangular. After you select a Calculation Zone command, a Dynamic Properties tab will appear in the ribbon bar. From the Dynamic Properties tab, you can change the name of the Calculation Zone, set its height, adjust the point row and column spacing, you could also adjust the zone color, point style, and point precision. In the design environment, left-click to set the first corner of your rectangular calculation zone. You can then move your mouse to a new location and set the opposite corner of the zone. Notice that as you move your mouse, Visual will render a light gray outline. This lets you see the extent of your calculation zone before you define your second corner point. Left-click again and Visual will create a calculation zone with points centered within the rectangle you just defined. Notice that because you changed the row spacing, the spacing between rows is larger than the spacing between columns. If you change your view in the design environment, you can see that the calculation zone was created above the floor of the room at the specified height. If you don't want your calculation points to be centered in the area you define, you can change your offset settings. Select the Rectangular Calculation Zone command again. In the Dynamic Properties tab, uncheck the Offset checkbox. Now when you define your rectangle, you will create a calculation zone that aligns the first row and column with the left and bottom edge of the calculation zone. To create a polygonal calculation zone, select the polygonal command by left-clicking the text below the calculation zone symbol and then select Polygonal. Confirm the properties of your zone in the ribbon bar. In the design environment, specify the first point or base point of the zone by left-clicking. The outline of your zone will be drawn in gray as you move the cursor and add subsequent points by left-clicking. A new vertex will be added to the polygon every time you left-click in the design environment. As you are constructing your polygon, Visual will draw a dashed gray line that shows the final segment Visual will use to close your polygonal shape. When you are finished specifying vertices, right-click and Visual will close the polygon for you. Sometimes it is necessary to create a calculation zone that is positioned vertically rather than horizontally. To create a vertical calculation zone, Start by changing your design environment view. To make a grid that runs from south to north, select an east or west view. Now select and draw a rectangular calculation zone, just as you would in plan. After you complete the command, change your view and you can see that instead of specifying the length and width as you would were you in a plan view, you have defined the width and height of the calculation zone. If you are interested in the illuminance across a surface, like the wall of a room, it's best to create a surface calculation zone. To create a surface calculation zone, from the Calculation Zone command, select the Surface command. You can then select a surface or multiple surfaces to add a calculation zone or zones to. If you select multiple surfaces, each surface will get its own calculation zone. The normal of the surface calculation zone will be aligned with the normal of the surface. This means that a room surface will have a normal pointing into the interior of the room, while an object built using the structure command will have the normal facing the exterior of the object. By default, calculation zones are drawn in dark red. The outlines of the calculation zones are displayed as dashed lines of the specified calculation zone color. If all the calculation zone point normals are pointing in the same direction, an arrow will be drawn at the center of the calculation zone, indicating the direction of the common normal. You can also change how the calculation point normals behave on the Dynamic Properties tab. 
A calculation point normal describes the direction that a virtual light meter located at that point would face. You will typically use the default directional or perpendicular setting. This is used for most work plane and surface illuminance calculations. The other calculation zone types are used in special circumstances. Each calculation zone type has a description of how the calculation point normals are determined. If you are using a directional zone and the only light source in your design is behind your calculation zone, the calculated illuminance value at all points will be zero. This is because the calculation points cannot see the light source. They are facing away from it. You can reverse the normal of a calculation zone in your design by using the properties command. Click the properties button on the ribbon bar, then select your calculation zone. Then, in the Calculation Parameters section of the Properties sidebar, select the Flip command. This reverses the normal so that the calculation points will face the light source. Calculation zones in Visual 2012 are typically used to measure illuminance at a calculation point. It is possible to change the measurement type using the Properties command. The additional measurement types are Excedence and Diffuse Luminance. If you select Excedence, which is the density of light leaving a point, you will also need to specify a reflectance. When you first change from a luminance, all the calculation points will be zero. This is because the default reflectance is zero. If you change the reflectance in the calculation zone properties, you will see the Excedence values update. This reflectance value is also needed when you specify a diffuse luminance as the measurement type. Visual currently calculates only diffuse luminance, not specular luminance, so calculation zones using luminance measurements are not appropriate for roadway luminance calculations. After you've calculated your design, you can add contour lines to your calculation zones, which can help you find values that fall above or below certain luminances. To turn on contour lines, start by defining contour values. From the Calculations tab of the ribbon bar, select the Contour command. You can then check boxes for the values you would like to see contour lines for. You can type in new contour values and change their color here as well. Below the contour values, you can select the Show All Contours command. This displays contours on all calculation zones in your design. You can turn off contours for all calculation zones by clicking the Hide All Contours command. To turn on contours for an individual zone, select the Properties command, then select your desired calculation zone. In the Calculation Zone Properties, in the Display subsection, you can toggle the checkbox for contours to display or hide contours. Calculation zones can also be displayed with pseudo-color shading. To enable shading for your calculation zone, check the Shaded checkbox in the Display section of the Calculation Zone properties. This will apply a pseudo-color shading across the calculation zone, where low values are displayed in blue hues, medium values in green, and high values in red. A scale showing the value range associated with colors is displayed in the bottom left corner of the design environment. You can define a custom color palette for the pseudo-color scale in Program Settings. To open the Settings window, select the Tools tab from the ribbon bar, then select the Settings command. In the Calculation Zones tab of the Settings window, you can adjust the pseudo-color shading settings. Now that you know how to create and edit calculation zones, you are ready to watch the Masking and Statistical Area videos to learn more about working with calculation zones inside Visual 2012. If you have questions or comments about Calculation Zones in Visual or this video, send an email to support at visual-3d.com.